Now, let's take a look at the flip side of the coin. Evolution is a more complex theory and hence only the most intellectual minds actually try to prove it or disprove the former. Others just choose a side and stick to it. According to evolution, our universe began with a massive explosion known as the Big Bang. With few suggested theories to what could have caused it. One of these suggestions is that it was caused from an unimaginable hot and dense spot more than 13 billion years ago known as the Singularity. It is important to note that the theory claims that not only was the universe created but also the space it now occupies. The space began to expand and the simple elements were formed. The gravity of the void left by the Big Bang began to draw matter together to form stars, galaxies and of course planets. One of which was the Earth, however this did not appear until another 8 billion years. This was how it all began and we could call this the first part of planetary evolution. The new planet Earth formed about 5 billion years ago and was a heaving mass of magma and dangerous gases. It was far from inhabitable and there was a constant rain of asteroids on it. Some million years later, the moon was formed from the remnants of a collision with a planet known as Thaya. This was possibly part of the late massive bombardment of asteroids, or it just coincided with it. This happened up until 4 billion years ago. It is argued that some of these asteroids brought with them water to the planet, while some say water already existed on the hot planet. Afterwards, temperatures began to decline and the seas began to form, and by 2.8 billion years ago, most of the surface of the Earth was covered with shallow hot waters, which had some microorganisms inhabiting them. At this time, we had small but growing volcanic islands, which was beginning to form land masses. So according to science, life on Earth started in water. Important to note that the days at this time were rather short, and because of the smog, may have been difficult to differentiate from nighttime. The next stage of the young planet's evolution was an extensive and recurrent ice age which covered the Earth's land and all the volcanoes. This is termed Snowball Earth and occurred about 2.4 billion years ago. This was more accurately described as the beginning of the freezing and thawing of the Earth's surface while the core still remained extremely hot. Remember that at the time there were already simple cellular organisms in the seas and some were now on land. Some of these bacteria were photosynthetic and thus produced oxygen which began the great oxidation. Every time the ice melts more and more oxygen is released and this increases the levels of oxygen on the planet. The increase in oxygen levels on the planet led to continuous evolution of cellular structure both on land and water and giving rise to more complex cells known as eukaryotes. Many believe this occurred by a simple cell engulfing other cells and then coexisting symbiotically. For example, when a cell engulfed a bacteria that produces energy, that became its mitochondria or a photosynthetic bacteria became its chloroplast which gives green plants their color. About 1.5 billion years ago, the first ancestors to plants, fungi and animals were formed. Under the surface of water, life was already teeming with both primitive animal and plant life forms. And by 500 million years ago, plant life had started colonizing the earth and fish had begun to appear and diversify. This diversity gave rise to some long species of fish which could breathe out of water. They would later give rise to the amphibians and the reptiles and eventually birds. Of course by now some of the plants would have evolved into woody trees which could withstand the cyclical cold periods and most of the land was covered with swamps.
It is believed that an extinction level event destroying over 90% of underwater life and 70% of life on land occurred around 250 million years ago. This was probably due to a series of volcanic eruptions and by 200 million years ago came the age of the dinosaurs which replaced the many creatures that died out earlier. Around this period the first or proto mammals were said to have been developing. These were the egg laying mammals. Epidectipteryx, the feathered dinosaur, was the earliest ancestor of the birds and was said to have evolved into the first bird about 150 million years ago. Concurrently, the land masses were beginning to divide. About 75 to 60 million years ago, the primates began to appear and evolve into different species and around 40 million years ago the first monkeys appeared while apes and other new world monkeys appeared much later it wasn't until 6 million years ago human species started appearing let's take a closer look at human evolution these interesting creatures started from tree dwelling proconsuls about 20 million years ago they are said to have been forced to evolve into the ground-dwelling Ardipithecus due to the loss of the dense vegetation about 10 million years ago. Though they still lived in trees, but they couldn't get around much without walking on grass. As the vegetation thinned even more into savannas in the African plains about 4 million years ago, the Australopiths appeared. They were gatherers and foragers. They were curious, they formed groups, they had bigger brains than their predecessors but smaller than their successors. Eventually, they became the Homo habilis who were the first known human species and lived about 2.5 million years ago. They were known to make stone tools and weapons. A subspecies of the Homo erectus, the Homo agaster, appeared 1.5 million years ago. They were known as the working man because they made more efficient tools. Homo hidalbrigensis evolved next and they may have been the direct ancestors of the Neanderthals. They had more complex characters, built shelters, probably communicated with language and coordinated hunts and buried their dead. These populated Europe, while other similar species were seen in Africa, such as the Homo bodiensis, which gave rise to modern man. This summary may not have been completely accurate. Well, I'm not a paleontologist. But then again, no one knows for sure how these things happened in science. And all these are theories based on fossil records and carbon dating, with a little bit of filling the gaps. It stands to reason that the latter is a better thought of and explained account, while the former is an oversimplified narrative that leaves a lot to be explained by faith. The big question is, which of the two narrations is the most plausible, as no records of these events were written by actual witnesses. The biblical accounts was claimed to be written by Moses, but some scholars disagree due to the timing. It is possible that he didn't actually write the books, but teachings of the stories he told that were also told him by his ancestors was passed from one generation to another about the beginning of time as known by man. As for evolution, science has overwhelming evidence, but that is not the same as having witnesses. For example, many things known to science now were different from what was known to science before. As more things come to light, the rules of science tend to change and we've seen that a lot over the years in the history of man. Rather than argue about which is right or wrong, let's look at another perspective, one which people on both extremes of belief will vehemently disagree with. 